government parties as possible over the issue of, of clarity on when abortion is permissible here in Ireland. The Labour Party wants legislation, whereas the Fine Gael Party seems to want something short of legislation. With us are Niamh Niamhrin, spokeswoman for the Life Institute, Claire Daly, a TD of, uh, of the United Left Alliance, Barry Kiley, medical consultant to the pro-life campaign, and Alison O'Connor, columnist and journalist. Later we'll be joined for a preview of tomorrow morning's newspapers by David Burke, editor of the Tumor Herald. If you'd like to comment to the program, you can text us at 53131 and place the word tonight before I comment. Send us a tweet at hash from beer, email us at tonight at tv3.ie. Uh, James Riley was understood to have said in the Dáil a few weeks ago that uh, legislation would be introduced in the Dáil to deal with the issue, to, to clarify the issue to do with when abortion is permissible here. Uh, but today he clarified the clarification. Just have a look at this. In the Dáil I committed to the fact that this government would not be the seventh government to fail to address this issue and I stand over that. Some people took that to mean that I wasn't going to legislate, or I was going to legislate. Other people took it to mean there'd be a referendum. I didn't commit to either of those things and it would be improper of me to do so given that we have an expert group going to report to us to point the way forward. So I want to study that report, I want to bring it to Cabinet. It is my belief that it should be published but that will be a decision for Cabinet and it will inform the next move on this issue that has, let's face it, divided this country for the last 20 years in several referenda. We want, I want primarily out of this. ABC report and, and, and I want to separate it from the terrible tragedy in Galway but what I want out of this is clarity for the medical profession as to what actions they can take that are within the law in the best interests of patients and it has to be in the best interests of patients so I, I think our citizens deserve no less than that and I think the, the profession that have to deliver the care need that as well and deserve no less and I'm determined that that will happen. Let's have a look at tomorrow morning. The front page of tomorrow morning is Irish Independent and it shows uh, Gilmore and Kenny now differ over abortion law, Taoiseach reluctant to act, envoy, that's the, uh, I assume, the, the uh, somebody from India, I assume, soothes severe concerns. Um, Alison, just explain to me how does one get legal clarity other than by law? I think you'd find it exceptionally difficult and that's the problem that we have as it stands, that even outside of this tragic situation in Galway, I actually I did a radio column on the, entirely coincidentally um, two or three weeks ago where I spoke to an obstetrician and um, asked that obstetrician you know, how this all worked in practice and did some other research around it. And my conclusion at the end of that was that it was an utterly ridiculous situation because there was no clarity and that we don't know the circumstances in Galway but in general I would have a lot of sympathy for obstetricians that you may say there's the Medical Council guidelines or whatever but at the end of the day it is a very grey area the doctors are generally quite terrified because even if they do take, take action that they believe to be right, there may be others working in the same hospital with them who believe it to be wrong and who may report them to the Medical Council. I believe that if you ended up as a woman um, pregnant uh, with a difficulty such as that your membranes had ruptured, you would be fine if you were in one of the three Dublin hospitals or perhaps any of the other major hospitals around the country but that if you were in a smaller hospital or in a particular hospital where a doctor did have a moral stance, a particular moral stance, that as a woman you could have serious difficulties there. Because in my, my research from talking to people, for instance, um, in one particular instance, there was no ethics committee. If you present and you're a patient and you were a very difficult case, the doctor generally acts on their own. They will discuss it with colleagues. There's no note, make, make, no note taken of the discussions or who said what um, so that in it, to an extent your main physician is then out on their own with the decision that they have taken and afterwards what's written on your chart is that you were it was a medical induction uh, there's no and nobody goes through the files afterwards to check was this a medical induction that took place before the fetus was viable which is what the situation was and that the reason it was done because there was a, a medical threat uh, to the, the mother's life. 
and it's an it, it, to, to if you look i mean i'm looking here at the medical councils it, in exceptional circumstances it may be necessary to intervene to terminate the ba baby to protect the life of the mother while making every effort to preserve the life of the baby yeah, it's clear so as therefore mud. Yeah. yeah so if you're an obstetrician I mean, you are the burden of proof. You, you are the person that's going to have to turn around and prove. And yet your hospital has no particular guidelines on it, n none that anyone has written out and, and explained. And the, I mean, for to be a, a pregnant female in that particular instance and facing that sort of a situation, it's a, to me, it's an absolute dereliction of duty and has been on the part of politicians that this situation has not been remedied. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid I don't agree with Alison, and, and I think, <coughs> to be honest, Alison, you, you've used the word "I believe" a lot because there isn't evidence to back up what you're saying. For example, no, but I have spoken. No, one, one, I, I, one, I, one, I won't interrupt you, other than to say, I Niamh, I spoke to practitioners. For, for she, example, just said she just gave well, evidence. No, but well, for example, there is no <coughs> evidence, and I, I noticed that Sam Coulter Smith, the master of the Rotunda, was quoted today in saying that there's no evidence of confusion in medical ranks in Ireland or over whether or not a woman can have an abortion. How come if a lot of his colleagues are, are confused? His colleagues are not confused, Vincent, and there's no evidence that they are confused. Like I'm, I'm, I'm by listening to obstetricians discussing this case in, so the, in, the, la in the last the 48 former, hours. You uh, former master of, the, of a Hollow Street hospital this morning, and he said there was confusion. <coughs> he, well, he, he, he said, said that, he, that he was looking for clarity. But if we look, if, so, if, if you, uh, if you, I'm you sorry, why would you look for clarity unless there's confusion? But, but the, he didn't say there was confusion. But, uh, Sam, but why would he look for clarity well, then? Sam, Sam Coulter Smith also said that, that there wasn't confusion. But and the, who's the, also? the Institute of who's Obstetricians and Gynecologists have not said that there is confusion. So you have to look at the broad trust of the obstetricians and gynecologists out there and see what they are saying. Now, the, uh, the, the All Party Rockets Committee actually reviewed medical practice in Ireland specifically. In relation to this issue and they found that there was no evidence that women in Ireland were being denied medical treatment because of our ban on abortion and that's really important it's really important to look what's actually happening statistically Could I just women in Ireland you, are not dying because they can't that's, access that's, life, that's life that's uh, sentence they can't from, access from, life saving from the medical for council adjudication on this and uh, mm -hmm. that uh, Alison just uh, quoted and it is it may be necessary to intervene to terminate the pregnancy to protect the life of the mother while making every effort to preserve the life of the baby. What does that mean? Could it, I perhaps it, explain that? Would that be a bit better? Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean no, to cut sure, across okay. well, you. Uh, whatever about interrupting people on your <laughs> own side, <laughs> on the other side, <laughs> well, interrupting just, people on your own <laughs> side okay. seems to be ungenerous. Forgive, oh. forgive, forgive me, but I'll interrupt if you don't mind. The reason why I wanted to interrupt on this is because... Why? You don't think that Neil's going to reply <laughs> no, properly? No, because I have personal experience of it. Well, you have personal experience of it? Yeah, because... Of what? I'm a, pedi I, I'm a pediatrician. Right? I trained in paediatrics, I did quite a bit of neonatology in my time. What that means is that where an obstetrician deems it necessary to intervene, as happens rarely, occasionally, but it does happen, situations of high blood pressure in the mother, eclampsia, things like that, and he needs to intervene or she needs to intervene to deliver this mother, he, yeah, I know, to deliver the, the mother early, and there's little chance of this baby surviving. But doing everything you can to ensure the baby survives means you tell the paediatricians you're delivering this baby. You're there present at the delivery. You have every, you have all no, your no, equipment. No, no, you've no, all, no. no, no, that's, this it, is the reality on the ground. But don't mind Vincent. the reality on the ground. That could be illegal for all you know. There's nothing illegal about it. But there it never be. has been. You, you're required to do everything in your power to preserve the life of the baby according to the medical council. That's not doing everything in your, in your power. It is. Well, doing of course everything. it is. Doing the point is one person might think it was do. everything in your Hang power on, and another may on. not. Can we just keep a little bit of reality in this? Yeah. Reality here. Two things to, dis, uh, to distinguish here. One is the management of miscarriage and another is abortion. The management of miscarriage is fairly simple, fairly straightforward. There are three options. You have expectant treatment, you have induction of labor and you have surgical evacuation by DNC. <laughs> all three, is, hold on, all, no, let me finish. All three are internationally recognized good That's practice. how abortions take place, isn't it? But they, we're talking now about a miscarriage. We're talking about <coughs> abortion. Vincent, the key thing in an abortion is that you do not want this baby to survive. At the end of the day, if the baby survives, it's a failed abortion. If, that, if what you want is an abortion, you do not want a living baby at the end of it. 
What you're talking about in a miscarriage is this woman is losing this pregnancy, very often a wanted pregnancy, a desired pregnancy. She would love that baby to survive, but it's actually being lost and there's nothing anybody okay. can do, man, right. woman okay. or child, to change that. No, no, just to clarify. Wait a minute now, you've, your interruption <laughs> of your colleague is, is long enough She'll now. forgive I'm me. sorry, your interruption, uh, I don't. Uh, <laughs> Niamh, if you want to sorry, finish what you're going to say. I was, I, I was and, going to say, and, sorry. Go on, okay. yeah, finish what you're going to say. I was going to say that the Medical Council does have legal standing, so it's not correct to say that these are not legal <clears> guidelines. <throat> it, it, can, it can order doctors to come before it, it can, it can strike doctors off if they breach the ethical guidelines. And I think your reading of the Medical Council's guidelines are wrong. As far as, as, far as I can well, see, from, which, a, from, an, well, from an ordinary, ordinary reading, reading of it, Vincent, the emphasis here is to preserve the life of the mother while making every effort to preserve the life of the baby. And that's every what effort? Does it, does it mean every the, the, effort? The emphasis and the first but reference... It's, it's a nonsense. Vincent, the emphasis and the first reference is to save the life of the mother. And I think you are doing obstetrics in Ireland a huge disservice. I've had four children no, I'm in, not doing, in Irish I'm not maternity about hospitals. The obstetrics at all. I'm talking about the, the Medical Council is not a legal authority. Let's it, be absolutely it has, clear. It, 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 it has it, a legal standing, same yes. as... Same as no, uh, so Borbia has a legal not standing. Not at all, that's not true. Yeah. The Medical Council has, it, it, it can bring doctors before it. It has, it has a judicial authority to bring doctors before it to strike them off. It has not judicial they, authority. Sky, it has no guidelines. judicial authority. Go, go, uh, Claire. The, the air of unreality about this discussion is astounding. We've had the focus of the country on the tragic circumstances of uh, Savita's death. We've had many, numerous. Uh, obstetricians and medical professional people uh, on the airwaves and in the media explaining the reality that there is a huge confusion. We've two years of a, a European Court of Human Rights ruling which said that we have violated human rights, rights in this country because we failed to provide that certainty and give uh, the medical profession the ability to implement the constitutional right of a woman to secure an abortion where her life is in danger. And when they investigated the reason why there weren't any of those abortions, it was because of the uncertainty around the issues. Now, that is a fact. It is absolutely undisputed. And the idea that, that we are having this sorry, discussion just, here sorry. at a time when a young woman is dead, I find absolutely incredible. Absolutely can, incredible. Can it is clear that there, there, is there is uncertainty. Uh, 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 Here you're we allowed have only inter interrupt your <laughs> colleague. Uh, sorry, go on. Here we sorry. have the world's media focused on the tragic death of a young woman brought into hospital miscarrying. Um, doctors, obviously we don't have the full circumstances, mm. but probably be believed that that miscarriage could occur naturally, left the woman in horrendous pain for days and so on, and refused to carry out a termination from what we're told. No, well, we don't yeah, know about that. Can, can I just, can, can, we don't well, know about it. We don't it. know the full circumstances. Can I finish the point, just, just Vincent? Just minute, just minute. Is it reasonable? Or what would a doctor do I'm in the... Sorry. Can I finish the point and yeah. you might understand? You what would a you, doctor you please, do... Uh, sorry, Niamh, would you, you've been on the programme before and you persistently interrupted other people when you were on the programme before. Please don't so, do, do such situation? an act. So just stop. Now, Claire, finish your point. It has been reported that obstetricians in Britain have stated that the biggest cause of maternal death in Britain is blood poisoning mm -hmm. as a result of infection uh, and so on, E. coli, the instant, the very circumstances in which Savita died in. When a woman is fully dilated, left that way for days, with her waters broken and exposed to infection, in horrendous pain, vomiting and collapsing, does that increase the risk of infection? Absolutely. It would, is a reasonable viewpoint to say that you are substantially risking her life by leaving her in that situation. So why would a doctor do so? Because the basis on which he's operating and trying to do his job is primary legislation of the Offences Against the Persons Act 1861 where he could be deemed guilty of criminal negligence and be subjected to penal servitude for life for assisting in procuring an abortion. Clearly it is the uncertainty surrounding this issue that has resulted in this in, situation. In, in, in essence, in essence, in essence in just a line, in essence you have med medical doctors, obstetricians, who are caring for women whose lives are potentially under threat, who have this underlying thought at the back of their minds of, if I take action now, I think this woman's life may possibly be at risk. Am I going to ruin my career? Now, there is, separate from what we've discussed, there is, Barry, I'll put this uh, point to you, and please reply, reply to this rather than something else, um, that, uh, there, that 
it is possible to have an abortion legally in Ireland where there is substantial risk to the, uh, to the life of the mother. But, when, but what constitutes a substantial risk? In the case of a woman, for instance, whose cervix is dilated and she's open to infection for a protracted period of time, you could argue that there isn't a substantive, substantial risk, just a risk to her life. It would seem to me that that is something that would need to be clarified by law. Now, that isn't just... The, the need for legislation isn't just my opinion or Eamon Gilmore's opinion or even the Medical Council's opinion. It is the opinion of the Supreme Court that clarity is required by law. Shouldn't there be clarity? I'll put it this way, Vincent. It's actually a very complex um, thing, and I don't want to give you a simple answer, but there are many grey areas in medicine, not only in obstetrics. We don't ordinarily try to resolve all grey areas by trying to specify in law for each and every case that might possibly arise, because that would actually just be impossible. So while you may want to have a certain amount of regulation or legal guidance there, the truth of the matter is the best you can do, and even the Medical Council would say about its own guidelines, that they're not specifying what to do in any one individual case. All you can do is give guidelines, and that's as much as the law is going to be able to do as well, because in a situation correct, you, right? need, yeah. Yeah, you need that the doctor is actually able to, a doctor with due qualification, with experience, with, you know, sort of taking all the factors into account, but is actually able to make the decision that he or she deems is yeah. the best one for That's this right. particular and, patient and at this particular time. Assistance by law that gives the guidelines. Yeah. Now, can I just move now, on from that, though, just for a minute, right. just, just to clarify here. Um, the reality of it is, when you're dealing with a pregnant woman, at any stage in that pregnancy, if her life requires it if her you know sort of if she needs it like in this particular case i mean it's you don't want to talk about it because we don't we haven't heard from the doctors in Galway, don't, so we don't do, know the first not talk but about there would be nothing an instance no, where but just a, to woman, say, a, a woman is is uh, is pregnant uh, the uh, fetus is certainly going to uh, mm -hmm. she's there's certainly going to be a miscarriage but the fetus is still alive but that's there, no that, impediment. That, I'm sorry? sorry? The fact that you no, still no, have no, a beating no. heart is not an impediment sure. to doing any treatment that's required, neither in law, nor in but, ethics, but, but, but nor in could, anything else. But it is else. an impediment where there, there may, where there isn't clarity that there's a substantial risk to the life of the mother. No, and if yes, you sorry, had an no, I'm if sorry. You had, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm, I'm not specifying. It's, let, a, brief let, point. Let, point. Let, it's let, a brief let, point. It's a brief point. I'm not point. specifying sure. this tragic case in Galway. I've no idea what went on. But if you, you have that le legal grey area, but you could also have a doctor who has a particular moral stance and, and, and goes with his view of the legal grey area. Maybe her. Can, can I agree with her? Can I agree say that, can, that Claire <laughs> sat here and acted and talked as if she knew exactly what happened in that hospital in Galway? None of us know, Vincent. You don't know, I don't know, Claire doesn't know. And that's why the Minister has ordered two investigations into what happened and they will tell us what happened. And it seems on the surface of it, and I don't want to talk about this case in particular, this is a miscarriage gone terribly wrong. But the bottom line is, are women dying in Ireland because of a lack of clarity. No, they are I not. Don't know. They know there is no evidence that they are whatsoever. But we know from they, our maternal mortality yeah, yes, statistics. Yes, the, that the, the All Party Iraq this Commission uh, review found that they were not. Our maternal mortality rates remain terribly low. You had a doctor on your programme last night, Dr. Walsh from the Sims Clinic, and he testified that in England, where abortion is readily available, a woman dies every month from what poor Savita Halabanava died of in Galway last week or last month. So a woman in England dies every month of sepsis where they have abortion. So we need to shift but this debate away from pretending that abortion is a cure for sepsis. And I do believe, and can I be frank here, that, 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 well, if you, have you read the papers, abortion campaigners have jumped on this case. They have made the most outrageous claims. I have an email here from one of your colleagues, Claire Paul Murphy, or your previous colleague, uh, Paul Murphy, where he says that, that uh, the, the, the very unfortunate death of poor Savita was that she was a victim of Ireland's ban on abortion. 
These are extraordinary claims that are being made and they're entirely untrue. And I also have an email which I find very worrying. Uh, I got a copy of an email, a correspondence between two members of the Irish Choice Network. And these emails are written four to five days before this story was broken in the Irish Times. And they talked about how to proceed using this information and about the death of this, this woman. Got to do well, the, it's, the it's got to do with the, the fact that we have people are there, using this issue okay. to try to legalise All right, abortion. okay, maybe. But it's we're not talking about that. <laughs> well, the issue that we're talking we about be. is, is there a problem with legal uncertainty with regard to all this? Mm. And if there is a problem with legal uncertainty, surely we've got to deal with it legally. It and there's also the little point that the Supreme Court in 1992 said legislation was required. Now that's a pretty authoritative source for such a view. Yeah. Now, shouldn't we be dealing with the with what the uh, Supreme Court says is necessary, shouldn't we get on with it? I Simple. Think, I think we should be making things as best as possible for mothers and their babies. And according to Sam Coulter-Smith and according to the evidence given by the Institute of Obstetricians yeah. and Gynaecologists previously, there isn't a, a confusion there for obstetricians. About dealing with the point I just raised. But, but you, you're talking about what's the, the best way to proceed. I'm, I'm, I'm saying the Supreme Court in 1992, mm -hmm. in its judgment in X case, a number of the judges in that criticised the Oireachtas for failing to legislate and said there needs to be legislation to clarify these matters. But I don't now, think anyone has a problem with clarity, but what kind of clarity are we looking at? Exactly. Are we talking about Eamon Gilmore's well, then kind of clarity? Then what's your problem? No, what's your no, problem well, see, then? Well, see, Vincent, for example, Eamon Gilmore's kind of clarity is to legalise abortion on demand. It's also Claire's kind of clarity, I'm afraid oh, to uh, say. How do, how do you say that it's legal? Because, it's because he, he wants to legalise abortion based on the British model. But, but, so the clarity he is seeking to introduce into Irish law is to abortion on demand. It would be unconstitutional. Yeah. Exactly. It would be unconstitutional. You can't do that here. No, this is just nonsense. Just a minute, Claire, just a minute. This is a nonsense. No, it's it's, not, it's but, it's it doesn't eggs. matter what Amy Gilmore wants. It's not possible to do that here. Well, and so would, it's irrelevant you, to the discussion, if, 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 and it's just a piece of hysterics. No, it's and, not. Uh, uh, just, just hang on. Vincent, you're the one but, who's hysterical, to be fair. But just, just hang on. The, the issue is, should we have clarity about the constitutional position that in, in certain very exceptional cases, abortion is permissible here? And I said, Shouldn't we have clarity? You said yourself said said we should on, have clarity. I said we should, you but said not yourself, the kind of clarity right. that Eamon Gilmore is seeking, it, which is to legalise abortion Eamon on Gilmore. demand. Don't, don't it mind absolutely about does Gilmore. matter. He's the tonist of the but country. He, if he He's is proposing for abortion. abortion on demand, which seems to me just... Ridiculous. <laughs> he's not, there's no suggestion of that. Right. Anyway, it's unconstitutional. He's, he's looking for, he, he said like that the X case could be used please. to legalise abortion based on the British model. If anyone doesn't believe that the British uh, government, uh, the British state has abortion on demand, they are fooling can themselves. We, can we, can we uh, come back to reality yeah. and come down to earth here? Could I go back to a point that Barry made? which was about the fact that medical procedures and medical practice have many grey areas and are extremely complicated. And that, and that sense are maybe not the best suited for legislation. I agree with her. The difference between this medical procedure, however, and all the other grey areas that doctors have to grapple with in order to provide the best care for their patients is no other medical procedure is operating with the constitutional provision behind it, which equates the life of the unborn with the life of the woman. And there lies the problem. It is as a result of that constitutional amendment. My own personal belief, Neve, is absolutely correct, is that the only way forward for women and doctors is to repeat the Eighth Amendment and have a situation okay, where this is dealt that's with a by regulation. That's a different point now. We're just but dealing in the meantime, with the issue of we have whether, leg Vincent, whether legislation is needed. Vincent, I'm curious. We're looking at, at this particular um, s s situation similar to this very tragic case in, in Galway. But I'm looking back to the case of the woman in Cork mm -hmm. who had cancer, who was gravely ill, who was taking medication, was on a medical trial discovered she was pregnant. As I understand it, as part of that trial, you couldn't continue taking the drug if you were pregnant. The et there was an ethics committee in the hospital that met, mm -hmm. uh, and I believe uh, really at great mental torture to themselves, but it was decided they could not give this gravely ill woman an abortion in the hospital because her life was not at immediate risk. She didn't even have a passport. She had to get a passport, travel to the UK, have an abortion, come home within months she was dead. What happens in that sort of a case? What, right, where's the humanity that? in that? Well, do you know, I mean, again, it's, it's always difficult to comment on individual cases when no, you but don't these have are all the details. Cases. No, no, I know, but what you're saying is this woman had the abortion and still she died. 
Yeah, but the point about so it is she what's was the on, issue? I mean, like, that the medication issue here. was going to prolong her life. And the fact, I mean, and can you imagine at that stage no, of, of, of her illness, at, having to travel, the, the actual, trauma? If you look at the reality at a, a recent symposium, international symposium on managing of health in um, pregnant women, mm. uh, there was a, a very good presentation done by a specialist in cancer in pregnancy from Belgium. And he was very simple, straightforward and clear on the fact that we now are able to say that pregnancy is not a, uh, an issue in relation to cancer Well, it was for, for this particular woman and for her particular case and for the medication that, that she was on that was We don't have her the life. details enough to know, but I'm, I mean, the reality of it is but women what do you think of are the not I'm curious as to what you think not, of the humanity of that situation. Imagine, Alison, what I think all of the time is that whether it's a mother or a baby or a man or anybody, mm. I don't think I don't want to see anybody's life being lost. Let's have like let's have no doubts about this. Nobody here no, but is let's saying. let's deal with this one woman who was gravely ill with Alison, cancer. I don't have and who had to get a passport and had to travel to the UK, have an abortion. Come I don't back. understand why she had to have the abortion. She had to have the abortion because of the the the, the medical trial that she was on, but, but also but that, that she was in that instance that she was so gravely ill with cancer that the pregnancy was not going to do her it was not going to assist her health in any way. But neither probably was it going to do her any harm. That's what international yeah. evidence has no, shown in this to us. Instance, it, but as I say, without the details, you mm. can't comment it, on it without yes, knowing what I type of cancer where or whatever. If the yeah. pregnancy was going to do her no harm and wasn't going to shorten her life. No, no, Vincent, no, 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 I didn't say that. As, as, I, as far as I'm concerned, it was going to. Yeah. There you're well, saying there are circumstances well, as where, as it, where it doesn't. But, but, well, in most Alison, circumstances, uh, it Alison, doesn't. let's be fair now. <laughs> I, 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 it, it, the issue depends crucially on whether uh, her pregnancy was going to shorten her life or whether it was going to make her health significantly worse. But it's surely. also that she had to come off the medical trial if she was pregnant. She could not why? continue taking that. Why? Because it was, listen, why? Like it was, she's going it to was one of the rules of the drug company. So the rules the of drug. the drug company are so more important. Yes. The rules of the drug company I mean, are more important I'm just talking about this. Her. I'm talking about That's the case in effect involved. what you're saying, yeah, Alison. Listen, I, I, you're saying that the rules of this drug company you know, trumped everything else. Very, very, I, okay. very I think if we were to rewind here, you'd find I didn't say that at all. But what I'm saying is, I'm not saying I agreed with those rules. I'm saying that's the situation the woman faced. Well, I'd say in those situations, let's change the rules. Well, I put, I put it another way to you, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you're saying there's no circumstances where a woman's life is ever in danger that would require an abortion, what's your problem with legislation brought in? Are you so strung out that you're upset that the government is bringing in legislation for nothing? That's hardly something well, to get. Can I finish my is. point? I didn't yeah. interrupt no, you. No, I Thanks. Just answer you. Um, you can in a minute. Um, I think your problem is, and I think Neve sort of touched on it, is that real life cases expose the difficulty that this issue has landed women in mm. and has landed the medical profession in and you can't handle it because you like to talk in emotive language and generalities where what we're talking about is the reality that thousands of Irish Claire, women Claire, every year Claire, have Why do we have to have ad, um, uh, personalised attacks? It's like it's not not personalising that's not, attacking not, that's things. You were, you were, you were, you were like criticising Bar barriers that you want some kind of power thrill uh, as a, a, in blocking legislation. That seems I'm questioning why, if she's, why she's getting so distressed about this legislation if in her mind and her opinion there's never a reason why it would ever be uh, have any effect because there's never any circumstances when a woman's life is in danger. Okay, so presumably right. the law would never ha Hold be on. Claire, I didn't say there's never a situation in which a woman's life is in danger. There are unfortunately many situations in which, not many, but there are some situations in which a woman's life is in danger. And when a woman's life is in danger, there's nothing in medics, medical ethics or law in this country that impedes a doctor doing whatever needs to be done. My point is that abortion is never necessary to save the life of the mother. Early induction of labour may be necessary okay, we want to go to and a it break, is perfectly break, permissible. But can I just ask you, in a situation in which a woman uh, is about to have a miscarriage, she's gravely ill, her cervix is, uh, is uh, open and she's in danger of getting infection. It may not be a substantial threat to the life of the woman, but it's certainly a threat to the life of the woman. In such circumstances where a miscarriage is going to take place anyway and the fetus is not going to survive, 
isn't there an ambiguity in the present legal situation about whether that the, the, the a, a, a termination can be a, is permissible? Isn't there uncertainty? I don't think so, Vincent. If you just take the fact that well, there are do, do, thousands, do, 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 do you acknowledge that? Like other there's no impediment. Think, do you think that other people, including obstetricians, think there's uncertainty? I'll tell you, the evidence would suggest that no, there isn't. That, do there you are think, well, thousands. Hold on, let me explain. Okay, right. There are something between ten and fifteen thousand miscarriages in Ireland every year. We've never had a case like this before. Why? Because doctors do whatever needs to be done in order to treat the particular woman in the particular case. How do That's the reality of it. How because we would pick them up in maternal deaths. Well, they are examined very closely, Claire. I'm surprised you don't I, know I, I, this. Yeah. This is very important. I, 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 Vincent. Vincent. That, Vincent. I want to leave, I want to leave no. it at this. I certainly have grave sympathy for the people involved, the obstetricians involved in these very difficult cases where they simply don't know what, what the legal situation no is impediment. and they don't understand what Vincent, they're going to do. Vincent, we only know and about this case because uh, the woman's no, husband uh, all right. came forward. There all right. were two unexplained Okay, we've got we to go to a break and after the break no, we we'll may Sorry. continue the discussion a little bit and we'll preview tomorrow morning's news report. Join us after the break. We're joined by David Burke, editor of the Tomb Herald, for our preview of tomorrow morning's newspapers. Just before we get to the newspapers, to go to some of your tweets, uh, Zalka von Tessa, uh, I assume that's a made up name, um, it says, No to abortion on demand. It will be used as a contraception method, treat each case in its merits. Uh, who wants, who's advocating in these circumstances abortion on demand now? Anyway, no woman would ever have an abortion, I assume, or could get a veil of abortion unless uh, she asked for it, surely. Anyway, um, yes, 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 we need legal clarity to further dither and delay. This will cost even more mothers' lives. That's from Con Colm in Monaghan. Darren O'Keefe says, I've never met anybody who is pro-abortion. The lobby does not exist. I've never met anyone who's pro-abortion either. Uh, and somebody else says, a friend of mine who was receiving cancer treatment had to stop when it was discovered she was pregnant. She died within days of birth. All right, let's go to the front page of tomorrow morning's news service. We start with the Irish Sun. Uh, a sinister twist in Poppy Row. Cops probe death threat to McLean. Uh, cops have launched a probe into death threats against Poppy Row Sutherland star James McLean. Um, in the Irish Daily Mail, uh, doctors should have known they could act, uh, says an uh, a ex -hosp Galway hospital professor. Um, and a husband thanks Irish people, and uh, James Riley says inquiry must stand up to scrutiny of the world. I think this thing, th th I think it's really unfair on the uh, doctors involved in this case that. Th th I, I, I've all, utmost sympathy with them, and I'm sure they were deeply conflicted and, uh, and uh, didn't know what to do, and most of us wouldn't know what to do in those circumstances. The Irish Independent, Gilmore and Kenny now differ over abortion law. Taoiseach reluctant to act, envoy soothes the Vita concerns. Uh, and over on the right, main banks uh, paying 28 executives more than 400,000 euro. And the Irish Daily Star, o only a, a mother knows the pains. The Vita's distraught mom calls for a law change. Um, and that's it. We'll have the Irish Times uh, shortly. OK, uh, David, uh, what stories do you want to focus on? Well, if I could mention, first of all, Vincent, uh, Professor Eamon O'Dwyer in Galway on the topic that has dominated the discussions for ages, a very eminent man in his field. And we had a story in the Tuam Herald a few years ago, which was obviously true, that Galway was the safest place not only in Ireland but in the world in which to have a baby, and that situation can't have changed that much since then. So I think that follows on to your point about the, the medical people who were involved in this tragic case. But to move away from, um, from this awful case, I think something that people will get a bit worked up about is midway through the story on the right-hand side of the Independent, where... Soon to commit an abortion legislation, says Riley. Minister wants to consider a report by expert group on terminations. And Hicka, uh, Hicka assures uh, it seeks assurances from Galway and HSE of proper standards of uh, safe care. Also, there are free, free GP care included in health uh, proposals. Okay, sorry, David, what other stories do you want to focus on? 